So I'm just back from a, we'll call it a 99% successful run around the block. Uh, seat is just laid on, tank cover is just laid on, nothing's permanently attached right now. Started the bike up, smoked a bit at first, which was expected because of the oil and whatnot that was up in the heads uh, from when I just did the work on it, putting those new valves and oil seals on. After a while, smoked some solid things are looking good there. I also didn't know if my water pump or if my temperature gauge or radiator fan were working. I got back, bike temperature gauge was about halfway up, so I knew that was working. Let it sit driveway and still in the driveway for a bit. The fan kicked in, so that's good. So I'm just going to double check now to make sure that the coolant is after moving around a bit. Uh, I'm going to fill up the reservoir so that way we know we got a lot of coolant in the motor, tons of coolant in the motor. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to let this thing cool off. I've got four brand new exhaust gaskets. There's a couple leaks around the exhaust at the head, so I got four of those picked up. Once this cools down, and give it like an hour or so, I'm going to go in the house, have some lunch, play a bit of video games. I'm going to come back in and get these new exhaust gaskets on. So, I'll see you guys in a bit. These are pretty rusted, so I'm gonna hit these with a the juice. Don't have to try not to put too much on it. I don't want this stuff, you know, burning up off the uh, exhaust or whatever. But I should be able to get enough on there to uh, just help it go on. It's a 14 mil bolt inside, or 14, 14 mil nut inside with a 14 mil bolt outside. That's barely tight. This one's not tight at all. <laughs> not even tight. How about this one here? That one's barely tight. And that one back here is also barely tight. Okay, I'm gonna zip these off the rest of the way. We have a look at the condition of those gaskets. <laughs> so here's something neat. Number four, made use of two bolts. Number two, had two studs and the studs just came on out. Uh, and then once they were out, I was just trying to see if this would lower down at all, even though the other side is still connected. And uh, this clamp right here is not even tight back here. So that's all well and good. It's not overly bad. It's just a bit of surface rust on this. But I'm going to lay it outside here now. I'm just going to stick my head in here quickly and have a look. There are no gaskets. Neither one of these has a gasket, and the underside of this is completely covered in shit. Just blasted completely, completely, completely full of goo. So I'm going to go ahead and take the other side off now. I'm expecting to see the same thing. Uh, I'll clean it up with a bit of brake clean, give it a wipe off, and we'll go ahead and we'll get our. Uh, <laughs> hey, how you doing? We'll go ahead and we'll get our copper gaskets in and get the exhaust back on. So, other side. I'll be back shortly. Oh my God! <coughs> I'm getting too old for this. So I've got the uh, header pipes off. I also got the clamps off of the back side where you clamp the tailpipe onto the header pipe. 
they're all surface rusted and need some cleaning up, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I think there's only one exhaust port that has one of those gaskets on it. So four new gaskets on this will make a little difference. Like I said, on this side, there's a lot of oil and dirt and shit there because there were no gaskets on this side. And it was like barely on. So it looks like garbage. So I'm going to give all this a quick cleaning up now. Some brake cleaner and a brush. Clean up around the exhaust ports. I'm going to go ahead and put in the new exhaust gaskets. And I'll actually show you those now just as well while we're at it. So here's what they look like. It's just a simple copper ring. Goes up in that hole. And... The pipe compresses onto that and squats it in. So I've got four of those brand new. So we'll have no more exhaust leaks. So I'm going to go away and do that cleanup because that's going to be boring for you guys to watch. When I'm ready to reassemble this, I'll run a fast forward and you guys watch me put it all back together or at least one side. So I'm just running into a small issue where these other substituted bolts are a little short. So I'm just going to have to shove up on this a bit more from the front side first and let that pull both pipes up and squat that other uh, copper gasket in a bit. Either way, I'll finish this up on this side, the other side. I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to fire her up again. Today we're going to be looking at setting up the valve clearances on a GL1100, so this is an 83 GL1100. Uh, first thing you need to note when you're doing this job, bike needs to be dead cold. Cannot be warm at all or it's going to totally mess stuff up. It's just not going to work out. Everything will be heated up and expanded to a point where a couple thou will be the error essentially. So if bike is dead cold, so the steps we're going to do are, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the valve cover. I'll just do this on one side, it's the same uh, for both. We're going to take out the timing plug back here, and we're going to take out the plug on the back side of the alternator here, so that way we can use that and turn the motor over. We'll turn each of the pistons until they're at top, so that their valve uh, tappets are just loose. The rocker arms are just a little, they should be, you might not even see them move, but you'll just barely feel them or even hear a little clicking or whatever. When you do that, you'll know that that cylinder is ready to be adjusted. I've got a special tool there that will go down over that nut as well as the inside post so you can make that adjustment. Intakes are adjusted to 4 thou. Exhausts are adjusted to 5 thou. So let's go ahead and start the process. So first things first, we're going to get those covers and caps and whatnot off so we can get at all the components we need to get at. So like I mentioned, we need a 17 millimeter wrench, flat top screwdriver, and the valve cover is held on with 10 mil. So we'll go ahead and we'll pop that stuff off now. I just wanted to quickly show you guys where that timing cover came off. You can see inside there, that's the actual flywheel. So there are markings in the flywheel uh, that show top dead center for cylinders uh, one and two. 
and then when you do a 360 with the motor then the opposite three and four will also be at top uh, if you're not 100 percent sure just go ahead and take your spark plugs out and rotate your motor around until you see the piston in the top of the cylinder and you can just reach in and touch the top of it with a screwdriver it's pretty straightforward but either way i'm gonna get this set up now so we can go ahead and do the uh the valve lash i guess on cylinders two and four one other easy way to determine whether or not your valves are fully seated or if they're actually being actually just turn the motor over you can watch so i was just doing that then i saw this valve open up so we know that this is currently on an intake stroke so now if i look at number two here i can see both tappets are just slightly loose so now i'm going to get in there with my feeler and see if, what those clearances are and if they need to be adjusted so my feeler gauge is here as i mentioned earlier four thou on the intake five thou on the exhaust so if we go here's the four and here's the five right here in the feeler gauges if you don't have a set of these it's worth your while to go spend the fifteen dollars and buy a set or you can probably get them even cheaper but they're, they're great so right now i know i should have a four thou gap up here i got nothing just barely going through on the bottom same thing my five is not going in there either so i'm gonna make that adjustment now what we'll do is we'll Loosen off this lock nut while we're holding on to the adjustment screw. So this is a 10 mil wrench. Put that on here. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So that's on really tight. Loosen that off. Bring this out of touch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my four thou feeler and we'll slide it in between there. So now I can see that I'm there. That's good. As I bring this in, you'll see things start to catch. So like right there, this is where I'm not able to slide it. So it's just barely sliding. So if I hold that right there, come back in and tighten this up, making sure not to turn that internal screw. Nice and tight. Now you see four goes, or five should not. And the five will not go there. So we know that's a four thou gate gap. So that's currently gapped correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my wrench on, make sure my Screwdrivers on my adjustment screw holding that tight and just Make sure that's nice and tight come back and confirm that I didn't move that at all my four My four just goes in and a five will not So now I know that that intake valve is gapped accordingly or the uh, the lash here is gapped accordingly So now we'll do the same thing on the bottom What I'm going to do is I'm going to slot in my six style feeler gauge as my test once I set this to five so there's my six right here four five six so as we already checked the five will not go through we'll go ahead and loosen this off now that we're loosened off i should be able to adjust until my five goes here we go five goes five is just hot right now uh, just a bit of drag on it there like so put our wrench back on make sure we're holding that screw in place tighten it up come back in with the five just snug prodding on with the six six goes we still have snug up a tiny bit more adjusted correctly as well for the exhaust on this side. So I'm going to put a wrench back on, make sure we're holding that screw in place. Nice and snug, come back in once more with a double check, triple check, five goes, just slides in taut, six will not go. So now we know that number two cylinder intake and exhaust the valve lashes are adjusted correctly. And you just feel that little tick there now. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the rest of the cylinders. We'll just turn the motor over until we know that we're at the top and our 
valves are completely closed, make those adjustments, and I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to put the uh, covers and whatnot back on. So that's the valve cover reinstalled on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and put my plugs back in on this side, put the plug wires back on, and then I'm gonna repeat the same process but on the right hand side of the bike for cylinders one and three. I'll bring you guys back once we're done. So at this point we've got two things left that I want to do with this bike before I consider it roadworthy. First thing I'm going to do is I've got these new Dunlop D404s to install and balance. So I just went and picked up a few weights that time so I can get these installed and balance on these tires or on these rims, sorry. Not going to bother you guys with that because you can just YouTube or Google or whatever motorcycle tire change and you'll hit a billion results. So there's no need for me to do it again. Once those are installed and balanced and put back on the bike, I need to fabricate a bracket for the headlight and the blinkers. So one of my buddies, Mike, thank you buddy, had some blinkers he picked up for a thing he was working on. I'm going to use two of those and I'm going to take the headlight out of the front bearing and we'll make up a mount. There's a bunch of mounting points lined at the front here, points where you can screw, bolt, screw stuff on or use existing bolts and whatnot to mount a, uh, a bracket on there that we can then have our headlight mounted out here and the blinker stocks off the sides of the kind of thing up front. So, I'm going to go away for a few hours and get these tires done. I'll probably bring you guys back when we're ready to put a front light on this. There's our light out of the fairing. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and get the wiring harness just for the light out as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and test hook this up, see how things are. And then if all is well, I'm going to go ahead and start making my bracket. So. I'll bring you guys back once I get the wiring that I need for this headlight to pull out of this fair. So I've been playing around with this harness stuff for a while. I got a bunch of stuff cleaned up. So here's all the aftermarket shit that someone was after chopping in this bike. And it was, man, like literally like, what are you even doing? Like some of the stuff was just like taped together. There's no solder. These uh, pinch connector things, everywhere, absolutely everywhere. So anyways, um, what I'm doing now is essentially I'm what some people call buzzing out the harness to see what is what. So I'm running into one small issue. Let me explain that to you right now. So I managed to get all the stuff cleaned up. We got our two basic connectors up here now. We've got the horns. Horn, only one of them is working, so I'm gonna put one back on, obviously. There's our horn connector there. And here's the main wiring harness that runs to the front of the bike up into the fairing. That goes up there for your blinkers and your headlight, high beam and low beam, all that good stuff. So here's the harness that I took out of the fairing itself. And this is what goes connected to that so usually when you look at things like orange white and orange those are going to be your blinkers left and right uh, your blues over here are usually like your low beam your high beam your ground is here your 12 volt power is here so when I connect this here so you can see like how these colors are matching orange white and orange white on the corners here the light blues and the dark blues are all lined up as well. I'll go ahead and i just connect that. I'm not going to put the, uh, the clips in or whatever. There's no need for it right now. So that's connected. So up here on my orange white and orange, I should have blinker. So if I put the key on, I put on the blinkers, the left one comes on. So when I try to test or buzz these out with my meter, 
I'm getting no voltage up here, nothing at all. Uh, but when I test it directly at the connector here, I do get voltage. So I'm wondering if there's a break in this, although when I first got this bike and the fairing was on it, you know, the front blinkers and the uh, front light worked best fine. So I don't know if I'm missing something. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and keep troubleshooting this, and I'll bring you guys back when I have a solution. So by referring to the wiring diagram in the manual, and there's a link to the manual in the description of this video, hopefully. If not, there is on the previous Goldwing video. I went ahead and found out which connectors are which here inside the, uh, the harness plug here. So with this one, these blinkers only have two connectors, so they'll only ever be on or off, like blinking. There's no pilot or marker lights, uh, light bulb or connection in those uh, blinkers that I got. So we've got left and right blinker, low beam and high beam lights. So if I flick the bike on right now, see our low beam is on. If I click on the left blinker, left blinker blinks. If I click on right blinker, right blinker blinks. And if I flick on high beam, you'll see the intensity of the light go up significantly. So that's all of that stuff. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to make ourselves a mount that will essentially mount using the available mounting points here. So there's a bunch of wiring behind this. This is a great big block of cast. This thing weighs like probably five pounds. It's pretty hefty. I'm just assuming you sort of pull away heat when things are running on the bike. I stripped all the other junk and whatever off, all the uh, radio wiring, antenna wiring, CB radio wiring, all that stuff. There's a bunch of extra shit everywhere. I, that's all gone. I got rid of the works of it. So what I want to do is I want to have it such that the light is probably mounted a bit here-ish, something along these lines, and then blinkers will come off the sides here. So what I need to do is I need to get a bit of steel. I've got a couple mounting points, one here, one here and one here on each side. I should probably only need a couple of those. But I'm going to get some cardboard out and start doing some layout with cardboard and see what I can come up with. So I'll bring you guys back when I got some ideas. So I'm not sure how good this is going to show up in the camera because it's aiming at the door to garage. But as you can see out there, that's the large cast plate that's usually on the front of that. I think it's a heat sink. Since this is going to be exposed to the wind, I don't think we need to worry about it. So I'm going to replace that big chunk of steel, iron, or whatever it is, with some just regular, uh, I think it's 3 16 inch plate. So then from that plate, I can essentially build up whatever I want off of that plate because I can weld whatever I want to it. So I'll weld a couple of mounts to that, and then I can have that go directly up to the light, and also have a couple things coming off it for blinkers as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, drill a couple holes, mount it up, and we'll have a look at it there, and we'll see how we want to mount the light and mount the blinkers to it. So here's our plate with a couple holes drilled in it. There's still a lot of steel all over the place on this. I'm gonna watch my fingers here. I don't wanna cut the mitts off myself. But now, these holes should line up good with these. And they do. So now, obviously this is nowhere near a finished piece. But having this mounted there, like so, and I'll clean this up. Like I said, I'm gonna round the corners, all that good stuff. It'll be wire wheeled off and we'll hit it with a bit of black paint or something so it doesn't look too bad. But the main thing here is the following. If I can find where I put my light. Having that there, we'll call it permanently, it'll be bolt on means I can fabricate a bracket that'll come up off of this to where this nut bolts to 
and that means it'll be just like as if it was inside fairing itself and I'll even be able to adjust the height using this thing here. I'll have a lot, or I'll have more than enough room back here for my wiring harness and I can even put a little cone in the reactor to protect that from the elements and stuff like that. And I'll also be able to come off this way and this way for my blinker mounts as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a piece of cardboard and I'll do some CAD, cardboard aided design and we'll see where boats we can get a nice piece of uh, cardboard, probably triangular or trapezoidal. It's going to come out like this and have a little bend at the top, which this thing here is going to bolt through. So I'm going to grab some cardboard. I'll bring you right back as we do some fitting up to see what we're going to do here. So the way I'm starting off with this is like so. I've got my base. And I'm going to work backwards from the light. So what I did was I went ahead and made this where we're going to actually bolt this light onto. Let's make sure I can see that. Out of focus, please. Okay, there we go. So I made this trapezoidal piece out of cardboard. And I'll essentially make this out of steel as well. So this will go here. And with that there, then I can work back from here. So I know that the light will go about here-ish. So now I know I can come off this way from here down with one more piece of steel and that'll be my main mount for my light. Now keep in mind, that's all this is mounted in the fairing with as well, it's just that one spot. So that should be good and sturdy enough for that. So now my next thing is I'm gonna hold this in place, take a few quick measurements and see what kind of distance I need from here to here for my next piece of cardboard. It's essentially gonna be a two piece, uh, two pieces of steel to get that mounted and in place. And from there, I can go ahead and make my blinker mounts as well. So now I've got the second part cut out. So now if you look at it, I just got a bit of tape put on one side so I can easily bend it one way or another kind of thing. So this is essentially what we're gonna have. We're gonna have something like this mounted here. And with that mounted there, the light would then mount here like so. And then from there we can adjust the angle of the light using this adjuster here. And of course this piece of what will eventually be steel will be fixed in place for good on this plate. So here's our situation now. This piece of metal is still pretty hot. We just pretend that this is, actually instead of pretending, let's just go ahead and My steel is just a little too thin, but either way, so we can go ahead and temporarily just bolt this in place real quick. Our Q. That looks about even to me. So now our light would be. Chubby. So that's how our light is going to be on there, like so. It looks nice and straight. Now I can also adjust which, how much tilt up and down and also how much tilt left and right this light has. So we can take out any imperfections in my manufacturing. Because I'll guarantee it, there's going to be a bunch of them. So at this point now, I think I'm ready to also tack this onto the base plate here. So I can come over and hold this by hand. I'll adjust the adjuster to the midway point. I'll probably do that before I weld it, just so I know then that I have some negative and positive adjustment to make here. And I'm probably gonna line it up through there so I can get at the adjuster, either with the vice grips or get it out by hand or some such. So, I am going to Pop my gear back on. I'll back you guys up a bit. I'll come over here and I'll tack this in place and we'll see how it looks.
So that's it, just tacked in place for now. I think the angle is good on the light, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that away. I'm gonna finish welding up that attachment piece onto the base plate, and then I'm gonna look at fabricating a couple quick mounts for some blinkers. So I just wanna give you guys a quick look at what I finally finished up with regarding uh, the fabrication on this. So here is the headlight, it is mounted to, if I get the other side, you'll be able to see this a bit better, minus the rat's nest. Uh, the plate back here, you can see how it goes up here. I've got this shimmed just slightly because the angle was a bit off, but now it's good. So now I know all I really need to do is bend that metal piece out uh, to match the angle that it's making there with the shim now. It should be good. But other than that, and if I turn the bike on, you can see there's our headlight. If I try to hold my camera in my left hand, there's high beam, low beam left blinker and I went ahead and bore the winker off my XL and then right blinker and we got right blinker so now that that's done this thing is road worthy so I want to thank you guys for following me along with the uh, getting this thing road worthy it's been uh, a fun adventure for something I paid 500 bucks for and put about another three or four hundred into this thing is now running just like a champ and I actually went to go for a run on this today and got about 40 kilometers out of town and got hit with torrential rains. So uh, that trip got rescheduled for Wednesday. But either way, I want to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one.